Hey everyone, Tyler here. And today we're going to go over how to bake or transfer high poly details onto a low poly mesh in Marmoset Toolbag 3. We'll also show you how to import these assets into Mixer so you can texture your custom assets. So let's jump right in. Once you have Toolbag 3 opened, you will begin with a blank project just like this. And the first and only thing you need to add to the scene outliner here in the top left is a baker function and not your model just yet. So just click the icon that looks like two pieces of bread. This is going to be our baker function. Once added and selected, you will see the baker's settings panel options appear down here in the bottom. Now at this point, we can go ahead and add our model in, but we're going to import it from within the baker function. And under the geometry tab here, you will see this option that says quick loader. Go ahead and click this load button down here. Then what you need to do is select the stool option that has both the high poly and the low poly within the same FBX file. Once loaded in, you will see that Toolbag has automatically sorted which mesh was high poly and which mesh was low poly in our baker structure. In order for Toolbag to know which mesh goes where, you just need to ensure that your meshes are saved with the suffix underscore high and underscore low before doing the quick loader method. Now, if you don't do this quick loader option within the baker element itself, that's okay. You just have to manually drag and drop your high poly mesh into this slot here and your low poly mesh into this slot here. And then you should be good to go. Now, before we begin baking, we need to verify if we need to adjust our baker's cage. Click on the low folder right here at the bottom of our baker structure. And then down below, you'll see that there's this cage option here that you can specify the min and max offset, as well as you can visually see this cage here over our model. This cage is essentially an invisible boundary based on the UVs of our low poly mesh, and it is telling Toolbag how far out a ray of information must be considered to capturing data from the high poly mesh in order to transfer that data to the low poly mesh. Just make sure that when you do adjust this max offset that you are including every bit of the high and low poly meshes. As you can see, if I scroll down too low, we're not quite getting this part of the mesh right here. So just make sure that your cage includes every bit of the mesh. I think the default number two that we had at the very beginning works just fine for our case. With that covered, all we have to do now is simply bake our textures. So to do that, go ahead and click on the baker one element here in our scene outliner. And then down here in our baker settings, we can choose where the output is going to be. So go ahead and save this where you want it. So we'll call this diner stool, and then we'll choose the safe type to be PNG. And then going on down the list, we have the option to change our texture set resolution. Right now it's set to the default 2K, which is the perfect resolution that we're going to use for this case, but you're more than welcome to change that size however you need. And lastly, down here under the maps category, we can select all the different textures that we want to export all at the same time. So for our case, we're going to choose normals, curvature, ambient occlusion, and of course the material ID. There are plenty other texture maps we can add to this list if you don't see them right here. Just click on the configure button right here at the top and you'll see a plethora of different texture maps that we can export along these at the exact same time. And as simple as that sounds, all we have to do now is just go up here and click bake. And in that few of steps in Toolbag 3, we have our baked textures just in no time. Now let's take these on over to Mixer and use them to texture our stool. Now here in Mixer, I've started a blank project. And of course, the first thing that we want to do is ensure that we import our low poly mesh of our stool so that we can texture it properly. So in order to import our mesh, instead of using this flat plane, we need to go up here to the setup tab. And then down here under the model settings, there's an option that says type. We're going to click this drop down menu and we're going to select custom mesh. Then just navigate to where your low poly mesh is, select it, and then go ahead and open it. And as you can see, our viewport updates to show us our imported asset. Now let's go ahead and import our baked textures so they apply to the stool's base model. So we can do that by going to our layer stack and ensure the base layer is selected. And to the right is the different texture maps that make up the base layer model. 
So as you would expect, we just need to replace these default maps with the maps that we baked from Blender or Toolbag 3. So I'm gonna go to the Normals dropdown. I'm going to select Load, then choose our Stools Normal Map, click Open, and then you'll see that information has popped right onto our mesh. Let's go ahead and import the other texture maps to give Mixer more information to work with when adding our surfaces. And the last map we're going to import is the Material ID map, which is the map that we're going to be utilizing the most for this example. And you'll see the different colors that make up our Material ID texture map are appearing right here in this list. If you want to view these Material ID colors on our asset, you could simply go to the drop down menu in the top left, then select on the Material ID option. Or what you can more easily do is just press eight on the keyboard and it'll showcase you those material IDs right here on your asset. And then just press one on the keyboard to go back to our original PBR view that we had in the beginning. Now that we have our model all set up, let's begin utilizing our material ID map to add textures to our stool. So let's go up here to the add surface layer icon. And I want our cushion to be some sort of leathery material. So here in the left search bar, I'm just going to type in the word leather. And from these previews, this leather here to the far right has a bit more sheen than the other three. So I'm just going to use this one. Now what we want to do is ensure that this leather applies itself only to the cushion at the top of our stool. This is where our baked material ID will come in handy. So essentially we're going to mask this surface texture based on the material ID color of the cushion. To do that, we need to go to the bottom of our layer panel where it says ID. This is going to be our material ID masking feature. From here, you will see the material ID colors listed here on the right. And though you can click on one of these colors to choose the mask, there is a much more intuitive way to visually see which mask you're selecting. So with the material ID mask selected, which you can tell it is based on this blue outline of our mask, if we were to over here in our viewport, hold down the letter Q on our keyboard, you will see the material ID mask pops into view while you're holding down Q. And at the same time, it brings up this little eyedropper tool so that you can sample which material ID color that you wanna choose right here on your mesh. So let's go ahead and click the blue color here at the top for our cushion. And as you can see, the material ID map has helped us mask in where this leather is going to go on our stool. Pretty simple, right? We can even go back to the leather layer here and change its albedo color to be something a little bit more red. There we go, that color should do it. So now let's go ahead and continue forward by adding another surface texture. So we can add a new surface layer and I'm going to go ahead and clear our search field. And this time I'm going to go down to the metal category here and it'll filter out all the metal assets that are on my local library. Let's choose a steel that has a pretty good shine to it. I think this steel texture right here should do the trick. So let's go ahead and click on this. And you will see this steel has applied itself to the entire asset. Now for the steel, I want it to apply everywhere but the cushion. We can go about this one of two ways. One way of course is to simply drag the steel layer down below the leather layer and you will see that the steel is only being applied to everything but the cushion. But there's one other way I wanna show you and as you guessed it, it's the material IDs. So let's go ahead and add a material ID mask. And from here we can hold down Q and again click the few different colors that represent metal in our asset. But there's another more simple way that we could go about doing this. Let's go ahead and clear all of our mask elements here. And instead of selecting all of the metal pieces in our asset, let's actually go ahead and hold down Q and select our cushion. And don't worry, we haven't done anything wrong. Just go over here to the right under our material ID mask and select the invert option checkbox right here. This is going to ensure that your mask selection of the blue material ID for our cushion is inverted and in doing so selects everything but the leather. And you can see how quick and easy it can be to assign textures to your model based on the material ID colors we made. Now I'm going to go through and add some surface imperfections to our asset to add some more character to it. And I'm doing so by masking these imperfections with the methods we just learned how to do using the material ID map as our guide. 
So there you have it everyone, after adding a few simple surfaces based on our material IDs, we have a really nice diner stool we can use in our renderers or game engine. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that it helps guide you through the process to setting up your own optimized meshes to use within Mixer. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.